we are so powerful sometimes we don't and we don't always understand it or realize it like i said like it's a language we have this language that we extra language that we can use um, to get a message across Hi everybody, I'm Mario. Welcome to another episode of Design Interview 10 Questions, where we interview designers and experts of the design field from all around the world. Um, today I'm with uh, Stephanie Speck, a Belgian graphic designer from Antwerp. Welcome Stephanie, thanks for being here. Hello, <laughs> thanks for having me. So if you don't mind, I would start with the initial question, which is what made you become a designer? Um, actually being an architect, uh, so I initially wanted to become an architect. I was always fascinated by that, uh, job and, uh, yeah, I was also always fascinated by the letters on buildings, like here in, uh, in Belgium, like some buildings from a certain time, they have like the name of the architect on the facade or like Or, or, or the time, uh, like the, the year. Uh, and that was something that I always noticed. So I wanted to study architecture and I went to an art high school where I could take like an architecture course. But then I was, I was still, I was really young. Um, and my model building was really good and my drawing was also really good. But like the, the whole mathematical side was just horrible. And uh, so my teachers, they really uh, advised me, you shouldn't become an architect because your buildings will start to collapse and etc. And sometimes I'm a bit sad about that because maybe I just needed someone who pushed me and said like, okay, you know, like you, you just have to work on the mathematical side and that, that is something you can learn and don't give up. Uh, but instead, because so many people advised me, uh, I gave up. Um, and then, yeah, the last two years of my uh, high school, I, I studied a direction was which you could call almost like a general approach to design. Um, and then it was actually through the mother of a friend of mine who was teaching typography um, in the arts uh, college who told me about typography and graphic design. And before that, I never heard about the word graphic design, which is completely crazy. Because, I mean, I knew the existence about a job that, you know, someone who creates records, uh, al like albums uh, or, or advertising. But I never really thought about, like, the profession. Um, and by talking to her, it became clear, like, okay, that's what I have to do. Uh, so... Yeah, I started studying it when I was, yeah, like 19 or 20. I was still really young. And but then um, it was for me really unsure, like whether I would become like a graphic designer or an illustrator, because the direction, like the course that I was studying, it offered both. And at one point, like after, yeah, like after the bachelor, you had to choose like illustration or graphic design. And I was really like, ah, I don't know. I don't want to choose because I like both. Um, I, I chose graphic design. But then when I graduated, um, I felt like, okay, maybe I still want to do illustration. So the, the next couple of years after graduating, for me, it was still like searching like what I would do. And initially, it led me to graphic design. But I'm still incorporating a lot of uh, illustrations. Um, so I like to do everything, a little bit of everything. Um, I, I really appreciate and I adore people who are very specific in one thing and just stick to one thing, but I, I can't because I get bored really easily. So I have this, I need this uh, variation in my work. Uh, but you can say one thing that I'm, I'm sticking to stuff on paper. Uh, so I don't design websites, uh, etc. but uh, like online stuff I don't do, but everything offline I do, uh, So, yeah, the answer is architecture made me become a graphic designer. And I think it's really funny that I get my inspiration still from architecture. So I really enjoy looking at architecture books or plans or drawings or 
going to lectures from architects. Um, I don't know. It does something with my brain. Uh, I can also I can look at at a building, for example, like from from the 40s. Uh, I mean, the style here in Belgium was really really specific back then. Um, and I can look at a facade and really translate it in my head to a layout, for example. I'm talking about modernist uh, houses in general, but um, yeah, architecture really important. So for you, like design is illustration, architecture, and graphics all together. I think that's where it started. Um, it f- for me, it has a lot of similarities. Uh, but it is where it started for me. I find it super hard to say like that this is design or, you know, there's graphic design, but like design is just everything on earth. And what, what, what do you, what do you think you create as a designer? I mean, you said that you mainly work with printing outcomes. Yeah. So of course, like the surface the first layer we always see at the beginning is okay, nice, should be nice. But then what, what's your goal, your meaning behind your artworks? Um, it depends from where I start designing, I guess. Like it's different when you, when you design for a client and when you're doing self-initiated work. And so when I'm doing self-initiated work, for example, like I come from kind of like a bubble and it's more like escapism um and it's then it's also for me like creating messages on a different level almost um it has this very soothing effect on me because i don't have to be busy with the outcome because it's just like being free um and for clients so it's of course like very like products related like there is like a final outcome that you need to yeah that you need to get um that you need to work to um i think yeah like what we do is like we're designing messages or something (laughs) as a graphic designer it's funny because i used to be a very introvert person until I started studying graphic design, uh, then it I opened up personally because I realized like I had a different uh, canvas to play with, and it was easier for me to put stuff like like to design stuff to get across a feeling than to translate what's in my head. These days, I still find it bit difficult but I'm much more extrovert now than I used to be before I was studying graphic design but your your project I mean your personal project that you start by your by your own is there someone else like in the studio for example an intern that can work on that or or is just from you um not on my my personal projects are really like my my personal projects like that's really like my yeah like I said before like it's my my bubble and I I'm all alone in there and then for other jobs for for clients um lately I've been involving much more people than before like for I think in total 10 or 11 years long I was always doing it on my own until I reached a point where I was like okay maybe I need some extra inputs and I think it was also the time that I got much more like intern applications and then it was more about the right timing, the right place, the right person, uh, like a first intern. And that was really good. And then I just decided like, okay, I'm going to do this every year, like every year, one person. Um, because of course, because I'm working alone, it's really important that I get a, a very good, um, connection that I have a good connection with this person, uh, because you're working one-on-one uh, and the first couple of interns, we were actually really sitting together in one space all the time. But then the last um, two, no, actually the last three interns, it was much more um, split up between they work from their home and I work 
from my place and sometimes we gather we talk or we call or we skype uh so it's like yeah it's a it's a blend of a lot of ways of communication um but they are very much involved in like the beginning of the process like the the research we each do our own research whether it's in looking for images like references or um like inspiration or really like sketching like uh, the fresh start and i leave that always open to to everyone who is involved like i don't want to say like i you have to create this or that like if they come up with like i don't know like a painting that they saw somewhere that they think is good as a reference for this project that's that's good you know uh, so I, I kind of enjoy that freedom. And I, it's also like this surprise effect that I get because I don't know what they're going to deliver. I mean, by now I know some people, but it's often still like a surprise. And I, I love that. Yeah. And have you, have you ever thought to keep any of your intern? Like um, not just have interns, but also collaborate, like fixed collaborators? Yes, with the last intern and the previous last intern. So the previous last intern, I worked uh, with her like on project base for about a year until I got a new intern. Uh, and yeah, it just, it works like that. Like the last intern, the previous last intern was working on, I'm going to call names now, like Nana. Uh, she was working on several projects with me. And then when her internship was over, I felt like, I still need you for this. Like you could be such a help because she was, she was understanding the project. So then I just, I hire her for that job. That's kind of like, um, it's like an ongoing process, you know, but then Lisa, another intern, like I worked with her for a while and then, you know, like she graduated, she got her own projects and then there were some jobs that I thought like, okay, like she can do this job and I don't want to do that job anymore. So it's like shifting. It was not a lot, but shifting. So but I, I think I'm still kind of in a zone where I'm exploring different ways of uh, collaborating. But it's hard because I'm so used of like being alone. Like I like working with people, but I also need my own space to be not disturbed. And when you're designing a project, is there a specific part of the process that you are interested in i think just everything but the most uh interesting part is just like the 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 first phase where you're so free and you you can just go into whatever direction you want and i i really enjoy clients who are also open to that that they they of course they expect some kind of style results you know that what what i do but it's interesting to also show them some surprise effects or something, or like even like a sketch by hand. Um, I think that's the most interesting part to me because um, it's about trial and error. And I learn a lot through that process. Like I learn more in that first part, first phase than in the final phase where everything, everything is fixed and then you have to work it out like that. Um, and for a long time, I also thought like that first process or not thought, but like the first process of, for example, like a client job, like the research for a client job is often really interesting for my own, like self-initiated work, because then I come to points where I think, okay, this is something that can become a total different design or that I get an ID in that process. So I take that apart. I, I, I save like all, all, all sketches. Um, and then it can happen that a couple of months later, like I start working on a self-initiated project that is, that actually has like the base or the, or say like source from a preliminary sketch from a client so it's nothing is going to waste. Like, I don't believe in kill your darlings. You have to treasure your darlings. So, yeah. And do you think perfection exists in design? Um, I would say yes and no. 
um, because it's different for everyone and it's only set by a couple of parameters. And if you take away those parameters, then what is the word perfect? Um, I think you, if you say a design needs to be like A, B, C, and the design turns out to be A, B, C, then it's correct or it's perfect because of those parameters. You know what I mean? Um, which I find super strange because for me, design is very intuitive. Uh, like I can look at something that maybe is a sketch from someone that is not final, but that I say like this, to me, that is perfect. Well, for someone else, it's, it's not. Um, so on a personal level, I would say like there is perfection, but it's such a strange term. It's, uh, I can't really explain it. It's more like a feeling you have. Yeah. On a word. Yes. Yeah. And also I think like often like perfection, um, if you think about perfection, you, you think about something that is finalized or like, that's how I grew up. Like, okay, now it is perfect because you reach the end point. Now it is perfect. But if you push that thought aside, then what's left? Like, for example, in your uh, last publication, did you feel like, okay, that is the end? Um, it was a combination of a couple of things. Um, so first of all, I didn't put a deadline for myself because I thought it doesn't matter. No one is waiting for this. Like I can just take my time. Um, but then at some point I came to a PDF file, like the a number, blah, 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 like so many, like final dots, <laughs> 10 or something. And then I realized like, okay, like everything that I wanted to have in this book gathered is there. Um, and then I just left it aside for a while. And then I thought, okay, I'm not going to look at the images anymore, at the content, but I'm going to think more about like a text, like an introduction text that I want to write. So I was more busy with like all this, the, 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 the notes that I was taking during the process of designing, like gathering and trying to come up with a text. Um, and I think as soon as that text was finalized and I, I sent it to the, to the copywriter and she said like, yeah, yeah, it's a good text, like good intro. I was like, okay, like I end with the intro text. Like it, for me, it was kind of like a funny feeling and, it happened that this was happening um, in, uh, yeah, like last year in December um, 2019. And again, I just talking about intuition, like I felt like, okay, this is just the moment. Like it's the end of this year, like 2020 to me, like felt like something major is going to happen. And it did in a way, like I, I couldn't say like it would be positive or negative, but I just felt like 2020 is such like a strange number. Um, so it was just a moment where I decided like, okay, I felt like there were signs or something like that. Uh, and then I, I forced myself like, okay, now you're going to quit working on it. Like you're going to either like don't publish it in two years and add more work or, you know, or stop now with everything. And then, of course, like I send it to some people to get like their like final feedback, like some people that their opinion really mattered to me. Um, so it kind of grew. So I can't say like it is perfect because, of course, then it was way too organic. <laughs> but then again, like perfection, like, like, nature is also perfect and it's also organic you don't have control over it like how it grows you know and that was the same with this book so yeah it's imperfect and perfect to me at the same time and what, what what's your opinion instead regarding the contemporary design because i think i don't know i have the sensation is somehow really organic but on the other end i i feel like 
is like really following a trend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I agree with that, uh, with those trends. And I go through phases where I'm having difficulties with it. So I'm like, ah, like this within a month, this is done. And but at the same time, I really enjoy looking at it because it's kind of um, a language of our time, like a, communi a way of communicating of our time. And within a couple of years, like we will be able to look at it and combine them with phases in our life, you know. Um, I, f I sometimes find it hard to... Um, so sometimes I come across a design and then I'm really convinced, like, okay, this was made now. And then I figure out, like, it's, like, from a really long time ago. And then that makes me super happy, you know, that, that timeless design. So that's where, where I come to that point, like, this, all these, like, trends, etc. Like, I'm also sensitive to that. But to me, like, the ultimate goal is really to make something timeless because it's super, super hard. It's like a challenge, you know. Um, but the subcultures are interesting. Um, I mean, now I find them interesting, but within a couple of years, I'm going to find them even more interesting. I think. Like even now, like looking at books um, with graphic design that were published four years ago already look outdated, which you think like, ah, oh, you know, it's bad, but at the same time, it's interesting. It tells so much about the culture that we live in. And I think... A really big problem is also um, regarding like subcultures. So maybe like one person has this really great idea and starts something new, whether as far as that is still possible to create something new because we have so much influences. But then there's stuff like Pinterest, I think, and even Instagram that destroys everything because it takes like one second for so many people to discover that and to copy it and to, you know, while this is going to sound old, but like back in the days, like it would take maybe a year for that design to reach surfaces where people would suddenly, like everyone would discover it. Or like you go to a library and you, you have to look like you go through a path of discovering to get to that one design. And now Pinterest and internet is just like, takes, takes it all away. So that's probably the reason why there's so many, people doing the same thing and that there are so many subcultures also. And what, what do you think, I mean, about the impact of internet on design? Did it ruin it? Um, I think the way, so of course, like it's faster, it's about sharing ideas and, and, it's very useful, but at the same time, it's very bad for copyright problems, you know, that, that designs can just be taken from a site, put them somewhere else without mentioning the source, and it ruins a lot, I think, for people. Um, to me, it's almost like the ego benefits so much from the internet, you know, like the exposure, etc. But then the soul gets crushed big time because the soul needs that patience and, you know, like devotion and being kind of tr treating everything like unique and, and special. Um, but because of Internet, there's no patience anymore. Um, there's less weight or something. Um, I think the oversharing is a really big problem. Because nothing feels original anymore. There's no such thing as like, ah, I discovered something and no one else knows about it. Because I remember when I was in high school, um, the, the first four years, like we had no internet. And when you would discover something for architecture or whatever, it was like, ah, like you could share it and no one knew. And now it's just, it's not possible anymore. Do you think for a studio is a necessary tool, for example, Instagram and all the social media or not? Because I, I, I'm seeing it that way, actually. I mean, I don't like it personally, but also talking with other interviewees, like 
somehow they all agree that is a needed tool, mm -hmm. not just to expo exhibit your works, but also to like get feedbacks and insights. Yeah, um, I I feel very uh, how do you say di divided or split or or mixed about it. Uh, I totally understand like the powers of it, and the it's it for me it has more effect than my own website. Um, it's interesting to discover, but at the same time, like I said, like it ruins a lot. Like sometimes I, I just don't want to see like all the other designs that are out there because it's then it be, it becomes part of it gets like a spot in your head somewhere and you don't have control over it. Um, but it is interesting to, for example, like I'm I'm teaching at the Royal Academy for Fine Arts here in Antwerp, um, and I find it interesting to follow the students, for example, or to see like what they are doing, uh, not their personal stuff, but what they are creating. Um, so in that way, I think it's kind of a new insight that you can get into creatives' um, lives. Um, what I don't like about it is that it, of course, it can become like addictive, um, in that way, like you, you feel like you missed out on stuff if you didn't look at it for one day. Um, I used to have like a personal account and then my work account and people were telling me like you are overdoing it. Like there were people like my like friends that would unfollow me because I was posting way too much, and that was like a wake up call for me. Like yeah, I shouldn't do this. Like they shouldn't they shouldn't see so much into my life. Like the stories, I think it's fine because it disappears. But like if I looked at my personal Instagram account, it was just exposing like everything. Um, nothing, nothing was personal anymore. Like I would bump into people on the street that don't, that didn't really know me that well, but yet they knew everything, what I was doing, where I was, uh, hanging out. So I didn't like that. So that I, I quit that one. And then I also quit Facebook. It was just like enough. Um, and, uh, my, my work Instagram is important to me to indeed, like it's kind of to keep track and with some followers, you know, like get feedback, um, and to kind of to keep a record of what I'm doing because I, I don't update, um, my website enough. And like Instagram is for me, it's like a mix of like final work and sketches and thoughts and just like everything. It's to me, it's that my Instagram, Instagram account is much more personal than my website. But so I'm. Um, I wish I could stop, but I can't. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you are also. You said that you are a teacher in Antwerp, and one one of the common thing I understood from previous interview is that they have the feeling with young students of young generation, of course, that they feel like the pressure of social media because they see so many things and also like they feel like i need to do it because all the people are doing do you have the same mm -hmm. feeling and in the school as a teacher are you trying also to explain them that like it's not necessary this feeling this anxiety um, until now, I'm teaching like in a first bachelor and a third bachelor. Um, I don't have the feeling that they are struggling with it. I did notice that the first years, like after the first semester, like suddenly like they, they have a lot of like work Instagrams, like, or they call, they call it their studio Instagram or whatever, which I find really interesting to see because then I, like I said, like I can have a small window in their other creative process. Um, for as far as I know, they're not struggling with it. Um, and I, I actually gave them 
a list of um, some graphic designers or designer or type designers that I thought like they should know about. And before I sent that list, I was thinking like, okay, should I send them the websites or the Instagram? And so for all those designers, I checked the websites and their Instagram. So it became an Instagram list. But then, for example, like the type foundries, I found it important. Like that should all be the website where they actually can try out the typeface, etc. Uh, but I don't think I don't I don't want to give them I, I don't want to give the students the feeling or the idea that they have to start their work Instagram, you know, or like that they have to have that kind of work or like, yeah, no, I want them to be free. And I really, the most important thing is that, that they can discover their own identity, like in this design world, like I'm, I'm teaching typography, but it's just more than that. And I sometimes find it hard to only limit myself to typography because typography is always part of a layout or, you know, um, yeah. I wouldn't want to be a student in these times though. Like I, I'm happy that I grew up or like that I started studying when internet was just like not really there. I think I was more calm in my head. Uh, yeah. And is there something that you really see that is changed comparing with the previous generation of those students? I think the most important thing is patience. Like, um, yeah, I mean, we live in, not anymore now, now everything changed, but we used to live in a society where everything had to go really fast and uh, within a second, you know, know the answer and also deadlines from clients, like in, in my work, like deadlines from clients and at school, I think it would be a really good practice, just like a patience or meditation class or something, you know, have patience. Like it's so rewarding to wait with something and to, to, to get to know a process and to allow yourself to, to experiment and allow yourself the time to take time, you know, because that's something that they struggle I think that they that they feel or they think like they don't have enough time or that they have to come with one design and they can't show everything because it's yeah that's that's what I that's my general feeling about that generation and it's because of internet today's generations are also what is going to be in the future and what what kind of role the designer will have in the future, in your opinion? Like still in the same or like becoming more independent? I think, I hope, I think more independent um, because these days, like I noticed so many creatives out there are like sharing even more messages. Like they want to spread more positive messages because of these times that we are living now currently. Um, I, I hope it's going to go like that, but I can't predict. I find it hard because like this crisis, you know, like for me it happened like in one day, everything changed. And that's the same with the role of a designer. But of course, like if you think about how we are all working now, like everyone is working from home, there's no such thing as like the team feeling when you were working in a bigger agency that's like all gone, like maybe like on your screen with Microsoft Teams or Zoom or whatever, but it's not the same as before. So maybe it will increase the feeling of you can work individually while still being part of a group or have feedback from others. I think that's kind of how I work. Like I, I don't have a big team or like I don't have a big company, but I, I have some people around me that I consult or that I work with. Um, it also takes a lot of stress away, of course, and responsibilities of like having someone work for you with like a contract and, 
you know, like working from project to project, it's, it's much more easier and safer in these total unstable worlds these days. So, yeah. Do you think the designer can do something in this moment for this global pandemic? I think two things. Um, one is maybe the most naive thing is like creating distraction because the news, like everything is such an overload of like the same kind of images. Like it's, it seems like I, I sometimes have the feeling that there, there's nothing else happening in the world. Like it's only that, like, the, but there is stuff happening. I mean, there are in some, like in Italy, for example, like there's like the, the blue fin, um, I don't know, there's a fish uh, that is on the I Italian uh, co uh, coastal sites again that was almost like exti ex extinct, extinct, yeah. Um, there's positive stuff, stuff in the world, but it's, it doesn't get a spot. Uh, so I think designers can do that. Um, And yeah, like messages from a different point of view, like sharing, because we have like the news channels, but yeah, the news is not everything, you know, uh, there's, there's so many of us that have like a different view on stuff and it, as a graphic designer, you can share this. Um, I think we have these days like an overload of negativity, bad news, Uh, so it's important that there's also graphic designers who take like nice initiatives as, you know, like creating posters for this cause or I was recently asked by um, a Violet Office, it's like a studio in Brooklyn to design two glyphs and they're gonna create like a dingbat uh, uh, font letter type uh, typeface um, consisting out of glyphs from 36 different designers all over the world and then they're gonna sell it and then like 100 of the income they will you know donate to a good cause so that's something really cool i think um we we are so powerful sometimes we don't and we don't always understand it or realize it Like I said, like it's a language. We have this language that we, extra language that we can use um, to get a message across. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much, Stephanie. It was really a pleasure to talk to you. My pleasure. Thank you. And take care. You too. Stay healthy.